The Wyoming Republican Party sending a message to Congresswoman Liz Cheney for speaking out against former President Trump. State GOP leaders just voted to no longer recognize her as a member of the party as she works on the January 6th committee investigating the insurrection and pushing to hold Trump accountable. But she is, of course, not the only Republican who has blamed Trump for the attack on the Capitol. Former New Jersey governor and Trump advisor Chris Christie says it all stemmed from the big lie that the 2020 presidential election was stolen. Chris Christie joins me now. We should note he has a new book out today. It is called Republican Rescue, Saving the Party from Truth Deniers, Conspiracy Theorists, and the Dangerous Policies of Joe Biden. Governor, thanks for taking the time this morning. Thanks for having me, Jim. Appreciate it. There is a uniform response in today's Republican Party to Liz Cheney. You see her, in effect, kicked out of the Republican Party. She was already kicked out of the uh, House Republican leadership. The folks who voted for the infrastructure bill, the folks who voted to impeach Donald Trump, they get punished by the party. I wonder, is there a place in the current GOP for the Liz Cheneys of the world for yourself? And what is that place? Well, look, uh, you know, I can't speak for Liz. Liz does a good job of speaking for herself. But what I'll say to you is I'm all about our party. And this book is all about our party moving forward from where we are now to be an effective contrast to the Democrats and, and the policies that are being put forward by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. But to do that, we have to be truthful. Um, we have to stop looking backwards. We have to stop, you know, grievance politics and vendetta politics. And what we have to do is talk about the concerns of, of the American people. And when the Republican Party did that two weeks ago in Virginia, Glenn Youngkin was elected governor and came very close to electing another Republican governor in my home state. But even in my home state, we won seats in the legislature in both houses by talking about a forward-looking agenda, not a backward-looking one. Okay. And by the way, right to note the different approaches that those Republican candidates took in Virginia and New Jersey. But the National Party is very different. As you know, two-thirds of House members the day the night of the insurrection still voted to decertify the election. It's become a new litmus test, frankly, for national GOP candidates, particularly in the House, to continue that election lie. I, I get the point of your book here, to your credit, saying the party has to move on. It's not, though. So, so I wonder, now, look, would you stay in the party if it doesn't move on? Uh, listen, I'm a Republican, Jim. I've been a Republican whole, my whole life. And this is a fight worth having. It's a fight worth having to be a strong, viable, uh, counterweight to the Democratic Party. And I just give you a bit of, of very recent news. In the Des Moines Register poll that just came out yesterday, mm -hmm. they asked Iowa Republicans, and you know, Jim, that Iowa Republicans are some of the most conservative Republicans yep. in America. Um, and they asked them, where's your primary loyalty, to the Republican Party or to Donald Trump? 62% of Iowa Republicans said to the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. Only 26% said to Donald Trump. Um, and, and look, there are many things, you, as you well noted at the top, I supported the former mm -hmm. president. I was the first one to come out and do it. I supported many of his policies. But when we had disagreements, I was his friend for 20 years, and, and I told him what those disagreements were privately and publicly. But okay. you look at that Des Moines Register poll, Jim, and it tells you something different. We need to win elections again, and to win elections again, we have to start speaking directly to the concerns of the American people, not about the past. That, that poll notwithstanding, I should note that national polls still show a large majority of Republicans support Trump as the nominee. I, I do want to note that some of your fellow Republicans have taken aim at you. I'm going to note Adam Kinzinger yesterday. He tweeted this uh, saying that you're playing both sides. He said Chris Christie tries to pretend to be both anti-Trump and pro-Trump. On, on Fox News this morning, you said you're still friends with Trump, but you're a friend who tells uh, him the truth. A as you know, Trump is an all-in or all-out guy. We, we've seen this with a whole host of folks who pledged loyalty to him, but he, in effect, exiled when, when they, they got on the other side of him on even a single issue. Uh, I, I just wonder, what sort of compromise do you expect to be able to strike with Trump? On what well, exactly? That does, Jim, that just hasn't been my experience. I've been friends with him for 20 years, and we've disagreed any number of times, both privately and publicly, and we've remained friends over these 20 years. And so it's just not my experience. And, you know, with all due respect to Adam Kinzinger, um, you know, he doesn't know Donald Trump the way I've known him over the years, and he hasn't had the experience that I've had. In the end, what I'm saying is that the, pre that the former president needs to understand that the election is over mm -hmm. and that exacting vendettas and revenge for people who don't believe that the election was yeah. stolen and the facts prove that it was not, 
Um, that's not the way for us to win elections he, in the future. But he, he wants to have that. a productive role in the party. Then we need to be talking about the issues, and we should be talking about the issues that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are putting forward right now as their prescription for the American people. Because if you look at polls okay. there, Jim, the American people aren't loving that either. I get it. But to, to your point about Trump, Trump has not given up the big lie by any means. He, he, he spreads it every day, doubles down. And he, by the way, he attacks people. You and he had a very public disagreement just last week when you went before the Republican Jewish co Congress and made the same point, and he came after you, right? So, so my question to you is, if Trump does not change his tune on that essential claim that the election was stolen, will you withhold support for him? Should he choose to run in 2024? Well, I may choose to run in 2024, Jim. Who knows? That was going to be my next question. Well, there you go. So now you got a twofer, right? Okay. I mean, I may choose to run in 2024. Who knows what's going to happen? But let me say this. Yes, the president sent out a negative statement about me last week after my Republican Jewish coalition speech. And look at me. I'm still standing alive and on your program. And so, you know, this is not a death sentence for anybody. It's a disagreement. And I have a disagreement with him on this issue. We've agreed on many more issues than we've disagreed. And, and that's the way we need to judge politics in this country. We have to stop making it be, whether it's uh, any political candidate or figure making it this way or the media making it this way, that you have to be all in or all out. I can tell you, Jim, the only political candidate in my life I've agreed with 100 percent of the time is me. Otherwise, I haven't found one that I agree with all the time. And if that's the litmus test, we're never going to find anybody that way. If you run in 2024, if you, if you follow through on that, Trump runs, Trump beats you for the nomination. Do you support him in 2024? <laughs> you know, who knows, Jim? Uh, who knows? And, you know, my you view have on fundamentally is, different views of the party and the country. It's, it's not about tax policy. I mean, you, you have fundamentally different views about the state of American electoral politics. I mean, it's, it's a basic question. Could you support that? We, we, do, we do have fundamentally different views. And if we were to ever run against each other again, we would debate out those fundamentally different views. And what would happen after that? Who knows, Jim? I'm not going to sit here and you know, look into the crystal ball this morning. But I've been very clear in the book and in my answers to your questions today about the issue regarding the election. The election was not mm -hmm. stolen. There is no evidence to support mm -hmm. that. And by the way, I not only said it this morning and in the book, I said it on election night on ABC after he gave yeah. his talk that you cannot say these things without evidence. That's the old prosecutor in me. And what our party needs to understand and what I'm trying to advocate in this book is that if we want to do what political parties are meant to do, which is mm -hmm. win elections and then get a chance to govern, we've got to speak to the concerns of the American people, stop Republican on Republican violence mm -hmm. and talk about our differences with Joe Biden, Kamala Harris and congressional Democrats. We do that. We have a chance to win elections like we won it in Virginia yeah. and like we won legislative seats in New Jersey, two blue states two weeks ago. To, to your point, you say this in your book, uh, we need to renounce the conspiracy theories and truth deniers, the ones who know better and the ones who are just plain nuts. Uh, former Governor Chris Christie, uh, the book uh, officially out today, it's called Republican Rescue. Thanks so much to you for taking the time this morning. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. I appreciate it.